Now, let's look at a very simple example of a double integral. For the moment, we're going to skip the definition part because it's very, very similar to the definite integral we had in calculus one. So double integral over here, is, its definition is a limit of um, the Riemann sum. Okay. Um, we usually don't use the Riemann sum to evaluate the integral. So we're just going to explain what it means and then how to calculate it. Okay. So suppose you have a domain. Suppose you have a region. Sometimes we say a domain. Okay, this is d over here. And you have a function on top. So this is in x, y plane. This is in x, y plane. And you have a function over here, f of x, y. Assuming it's positive, then we have some kind of shape like this, right? And then double integral simply means the volume that we have over here. Okay? So that's what we have. And usually it's not easy to evaluate, but when the domain is a rectangular shape, then it's actually pretty straightforward. Okay. So let's try to evaluate this uh, double integral over here. So we have double integral just put to um, elongated s over here and d, put a d over here. And your function, you have 2x minus 3y squared and dx dy. And d over here, you can try to sketch the domain. It's always a good habit to do that. So this is x, this is y. And x is between 0 and 2, and y is between 1 and 2. You don't have to have exact scale. That's going to be fine, as long as you can see the bounds correctly. So now what do we do? Um, the method is called convert this one into an iterated integral. It doesn't really matter. You can say the following thing. Um, you say, I'm going to fix x first. So if x is fixed then y goes between 1 and 2, right? You can, you can do the other way around as well. We will see that. So if we fix x first, then y goes from 1 to 2. So we're going to integrate y first. And x is fixed. And y is changing the, um, the dummy variable. And then outside, after that, we're going to integrate over x. And that's, that's what we do. So this is called an iterated integral. So when we integrate 1 to 2, 2x minus 3y squared dy, be very careful. 2x actually is considered a constant. So it's 2xy and then minus y cubed. And then you plug in value 1 and 2. Okay. So remember, if you take the derivative, of 2xy, you get 2x, right? This is um, the one. So try to avoid using x squared, all right? So now when you plug in 2 for y, then you're going to have 4x minus 8, okay? And then subtract 2x minus 1 when you plug in 1 over there for y. Uh, you can even say, well, this is y, this is y, right? That's, that's easier to remember. Then you're going to have 2x minus 8 plus 1. So we're going to have minus 7. OK, so this is a 1. So now we put it back. So you can calculate on the side. And then from 0 to 2, the inside we have done. And then this is going to be 2x minus 7 and dx, all right? and then from 0 to 2. Oh, we can actually just integrate now. We don't need to do any intermediate step. So now this 2x becomes x squared minus 7x. And then we plug in 0 and a 2. So we're going to have 4 over here minus 2. Um, uh, here, what we have over here is 14, right? So we have negative 10. Now, 
there is another example in the textbook, just slightly different, and the answer is also very close. Okay. So this is one way to evaluate this. But on the other hand, because we have a rectangular domain, we can also switch the order. Or we can say it's going to be from 1 to 2 later, but from 0 to 2 first, and 2x minus 3y squared, and dx first, and dy later. Okay. And that's the convenience of having a rectangular, rectangular domain. So now we do it again on the side, from 0 to 2, 2x minus 3y squared, dx, remember y is a constant, so this is x squared, minus 3y squared x, and we plug in 0 and 2. So when x is 2, we have 4 minus 6y squared, right? When x is 0, it's simply going to be 0. So um, now we have this one it's from 1 to 2, and 4 minus 6y squared, and dy, okay? And then we integrate, so this is going to be 4y minus 2y cubed, right? We have simple integral, so we can um, find the antiderivative rather easily. And then we plug in value, so this is going to be 8 minus 2 times 8, that's going to be 16, okay? And then subtract 4y is minus 2, okay? So this one is going to be negative 8, and this one is going to be negative 2. And then we have negative 10. You see, uh, we are very lucky we get the same answer, but it's guaranteed we should have the same answer.